So we've got L'Hopital's rule, but we also have Taylor expansion. And if you put the two of those together, then they really give you a great set of tools for taking care of indeterminate limits. But the question remains, which technique do you use in any given situation? Which one works best? Let's look at a couple of examples. Consider the limit as x goes to zero of tangent of x divided by arc sine of x. Now, I'm thinking I could Taylor expand these, but I would have to remember what those are. Well, let's think. Let's try Taylor expanding. I have the limit as x goes to zero of what? Tangent of x, Taylor expanded about zero is x, plus x cubed over three, plus two fifteenths, x to the fifth, plus a bunch of other stuff. Arc sine of x is x plus x cubed over six, plus three fortieths, x to the fifth, plus etc, etc, etc. But really, the only thing that matters here are those leading order terms, which is x up top and x down below. Factor that out, take a limit as x goes to zero, you get one. That's it, that's the answer. Great, Taylor expansion, it works fine. But those Taylor series, I did not have those memorized. I had to look those up. We haven't even covered those yet. I mean, how did you get those? Did you just compute a bunch of derivatives? In which case, why not just use L'Hopital? I mean, look, those leading order terms, the x, the x, that's really the only thing that mattered. And that was really just what you get from a single derivative. So let's do L'Hopital's. Let's take the limit as x goes to zero of what? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of arc sine is, what was that, one over or square root of one minus x squared? Oh yeah, right, quantity one minus x squared to the negative one half power. I can evaluate both of these at zero and I get, of course, one, giving me the same answer, one over one is one. Okay, there's really no contest here. In this example, L'Hopital's rule, definitely the way to go. But we could make the contest a little more fair if we modify this a little bit. Consider the limit as x goes to zero of x minus tangent of x divided by x minus arc sine of x. Now things are a little bit different. Why? Well, it's easy to compute the derivatives of these, so you might think L'Hopital is the way to go. And indeed, you could do it, it would work fine, but what happens in this case? If we take the limit as x goes to zero, what do we have? We have x minus the Taylor expansion of tan x up top, and x minus the Taylor expansion of arc sine down below. Recalling what those Taylor expansions are, we see that those leading order terms are equal to x that cancels out with the x that's in the front. So those first order terms, they're all gone. What are the leading order terms now? The leading order terms are those cubic terms, x cubed over three, up top, x cubed over six, down below, everything else, higher order terms, factor out an x cubed, cancel. What we get in the end when we evaluate that limit is one third divided by one sixth. That's two, the final answer. Now, could we have done this with L'Hopital? Yes, but it would have been a little painful. We would have had to have taken three derivatives of the numerator of the denominator. That's not so bad, really. I think this is sort of an even match in terms of difficulty, but it's all predicated on having known the Taylor series for tangent and for arc sine. In more involved cases where you do know how to Taylor expand your functions, it's like having a superpower. Consider the limit as x goes to zero of, up top, x squared times log of cosine of x, and down below, sine squared of quantity 3x squared. Now, this is kind of complicated. This does not look like it would be fun to L'Hopital. If I plug in x equals zero, I'm getting zero over zero, so I gotta do something. These functions are really, really nice though when it comes to Taylor expansion. So let's try that. What we have is the limit as x goes to zero of, in the numerator, x squared 
times log of what? Let's Taylor expand that cosine of x. That gives us 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Keep going, keep going. Down below, what I need to do is expand out sine of quantity 3x squared and then square that. So what is that? Well, let's see. 3x squared minus 1 over 3 factorial times quantity 3x squared cubed and then a whole bunch of higher order terms. Now here's where it's going to get a little bit involved. We've still got that natural log up top, right? Right. But it's something of the form log of 1 plus something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify all those higher order terms, that something, and then use my Taylor series for log of 1 plus something. This is going to give me the limit as x goes to 0 of, in the numerator, x squared times quantity First of all, I take all of those higher order terms, the minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Keep going, keep going. I take all that. Then I need to take all that stuff, quantity squared, divide by 2, subtract that off, plus qubit, divide by 3, blah, 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 blah. You know the thing for log of 1 plus something. Okay, now in the denominator, when I take that big long series and I square it, I'm going to take the first term, the lowest order term, 3x squared. When I square that, I get 9x to the fourth. That's great. Now, as far as the higher order terms go, we're not going to really need them. But I'll tell you that the second term in this series, the next highest order term, is minus 27x to the eighth. Assuming I did it right. I kind of did it in my head. Okay, where are we at now? Well, we've got the limit as x goes to 0 of, I'm looking at these guys, the numerator, the denominator, the leading order terms in both cases are fourth order. So I'm going to factor out an x to the fourth. Up top, what's left over is a negative 1 half, and then with some additional work that I'm not going to show you, the next order term is minus x squared over 12. That keeps going, that keeps going. Down below, after factoring out that x to the fourth, what I have is a leading order term of 9, followed by negative 27x to the fourth, and a bunch of other stuff. Those x to the fourths cancel, and what really matters is the coefficients in front of them. That's going to be negative 1 half up top, 9 below, giving me a final answer of negative 1 18th. Now, what does this all mean? First of all, this answer, not obvious. You look at this limit and you're like, oh yeah, negative 1 18th, clearly. Nope, we've really done something difficult. What really helped us, what really saved us here was being good with Taylor series, with knowing the elementary Taylor series, knowing how to manipulate them and pull out the leading order terms. Could we have done this with L'Hopital's rule? Yes. What would it have taken it would have taken computing derivatives of x squared log of cosine of x. That's a pain. And because it's the fourth order terms that wound up being significant, we would have had to apply L'Hopital's rule four times. That would have been painful. Could it be done? Yes, of course. But I think in this case, Taylor series was the much better way to go. In general, given a problem, Look, if you could tailor expand it, give that a try. If you can't, start taking derivatives and doing L'Hopital's rule. You'll get to the same answer either way.